Nestled in the Cotswolds of Gloucestershire, Stroud is a quaint market town celebrated for its vibrant art scene, eco-friendly ethos and historic charm. Its streets bustle with independent shops, cosy cafes and traditional pubs, embodying a commitment to local enterprise. Surrounded by lush countryside, Stroud offers ample opportunities for outdoor adventures, from scenic walks along the Cotswold Way to exploring the Slad Valley, immortalised by author Laurie Lee. With its rich heritage and progressive spirit, Stroud captivates visitors with its unique blend of rural allure and cultural vitality. Remembrance Sunday in the UK is a solemn occasion, held on the second Sunday in November, dedicated to honouring the sacrifices of British and Commonwealth military personnel who lost their lives in conflicts past and present. It was on this Sunday, the 12th of November 1989, when the Stroud Fire Brigade were notified of a blaze at a holiday cottage located in Rodborough, less than two miles south of Stroud. Firefighters swiftly travelled to the cottage and successfully extinguished the inferno. To their horror, in a bedroom, they discovered the lifeless body of a woman lying in the ashes. Gloucestershire Constabulary were swift in identifying the woman as 43-year-old Carmel Gamble, who owned the cottage. Initially, it was assumed that Carmel had died due to smoke inhalation or severe burns. However, it was discovered that this was not the case and she had in fact been violently murdered. Her body had been mutilated and stacks of clothing were ignited using paraffin. The pathologist who conducted the post-mortem concluded that Carmel had died from a badly fractured skull caused by multiple blows to the head. Carmel O'Donnell was born and raised in Stroud and also married her husband, David Gamble, who was a computer executive in the town in 1973. The couple lived in a flat on Church Road in Wimbledon, London, and together they purchased a holiday cottage located at the Boulevard Walkley Hill in the village of Rodborough. Media reports from 1989 and onwards stated that the couple did not have any children. Carmel was described as an intelligent woman who wanted to be close with other people but was very much a loner who spent a lot of her free time thumbing through the pages of books at her local library. In November of 1989, Carmel spent time alone at the cottage whilst her husband, David, who at this point was stated to have been a composer, worked in the city of London. Carmel Gamble had been living for 15 years with an eating disorder, specifically anorexia nervosa. She had been regularly receiving treatment for the condition at St George's Hospital in London, where her doctor observed that due to her chronic anorexia, she experienced a state of continuous or semi-starvation, which manifested in heightened alertness, excessive activity, restless sleep patterns, frequent irritability and challenges in relaxing. Carmel, who in 1989 weighed less than five stone, governed her life by strict routines, valuing order and meticulous organisation, which provided her with a profound sense of control, as noted by her doctor. Despite experiencing frequent hunger, she adhered strictly to consuming only safe, non-fattening foods, such as carrots and other vegetables. However, she did occasionally allow herself a treat of fruit gums after meals, though she exhibited a particular pattern of consumption, limiting herself to a few gums of the same colour, typically three at a time. Her doctor further disclosed that she preferred shopping in the evenings, partly due to the approaching dusk, which often left Carmel feeling lonely and apprehensive about the night. Additionally, she found solace in the dimming light, feeling less self-conscious about her appearance as darkness descended. 
In Wimbledon, she frequented local shops and boutiques. Prior to her murder, she had recently visited a boutique to purchase a top, leaving a £5 deposit with the shopkeeper, mentioning an upcoming trip where she would be absent from normality for a couple of weeks. In October of 1989, she departed Wimbledon to return to the holiday cottage in Rodborough, intending to spend a few weeks by herself while her husband remained in London for work. Despite their physical separation, they had scheduled specific times to communicate via telephone, utilising a public phone box situated outside the cottage. Witness testimonies reconstructed Carmel's movements in the hours and days leading up to her death. On Thursday, November 9th, 1989, at approximately 5.30pm, Carmel was seen entering a Rumbelow's shop in the centre of Stroud, alongside an unidentified man. Descriptions of the man indicated he was a white male, approximately 45 years old, standing at 5 feet 4 inches tall with a slim frame, dark brown unkempt shoulder length hair, intense eyes and dressed in a light grey herringbone jacket with a dark grey pullover. The Rumbelow's shop assistant, who witnessed Carmel with the man, noted that as she approached the pair, the man promptly departed. In 1996, a woman came forward with additional information regarding seeing Carmel with the man, expressing her inability to sleep due to what she knew. Police emphasised their belief that someone had knowledge of the man's identity. Police had interviewed David Gamble, however he was cleared of any involvement, having had a solid alibi being away for work in London. Further witness statements placed Carmel at So-and-So, a haberdashery in the town, near to closing time at 4.30pm on Saturday the 11th of November, where she bought six buttons. In an interview with BBC's Crime Watch, the shopkeeper stated that Carmel only ever went shopping alone or with her husband. She was a regular customer to the haberdashery and was said to have been quiet and tended to pay with cash or by cheque. At 5.30pm, she was spotted in health and beauty retailer Boots on the High Street, where she made additional purchases. The manageress recalled Carmel distinctly, as she had to delay closing until after assisting her at the checkout. This manageress at Boots is the final known individual to have seen Carmel Gamble alive. Investigators are unable to confirm how Carmel travelled back to the cottage that evening. It was theorised that perhaps she took a taxi from the Stroud Town Centre or walked the nearly two mile distance back to the cottage, which her loved ones believed to be entirely plausible and something she certainly would have done. It was at approximately 8am the following morning, on Remembrance Sunday, a Stroud local noticed an unfamiliar individual inside the phone box adjacent to Carmel's cottage, with the door to the phone box slightly ajar. Shortly thereafter, smoke emanated from her residence, prompting the fire brigade to be alerted at 8.20am. While it was initially considered that the individual in the phone box across from Carmel's cottage might not be linked to her murder, the police expressed interest in locating them due to the close proximity of the phone box to her residence and the swift detection of the fire shortly thereafter. This person attracted attention as they were seen wearing a long woolen hat. It was observed that the fire brigade received notification of the fire from an unidentified male caller who dialed 999 from the phone box opposite her cottage. During the investigation into her murder, the police highlighted their efforts to locate a man with a soft Irish accent. It was discovered that Carmel's woolen coat was missing, with some suggesting that the perpetrator likely took it as a means to cover up possible bloodstains on their clothes. Investigators released an e-fit of the potential suspect in the hopes of identifying him, however their efforts were unfortunately fruitless. 
Furthermore, despite combing the cottage and surrounding areas, the murder weapon or weapons were never found. Subsequently, during a later appeal, the police sought to identify a man observed sitting on a bench a few yards from Carmel's cottage holding a white plastic bag. At approximately 2.30am on the morning of November 12th, 1989, witnesses reported seeing him with his head in his hands. Investigators noted that the white plastic bag appeared to contain something, raising questions as to whether it held a container with an accelerant, such as paraffin. They suspected that Carmel's cottage might have been set ablaze using such an accelerant. Authorities also expressed interest in any information pertaining to a rusty yellow Triumph Dolomite car discovered abandoned the day preceding the murder on November 10th, 1989. Two men already serving life sentences for murder came under suspicion. In 1991, one of the men brutally murdered both of his parents with an axe in Tetbury in Gloucestershire, leading to his imprisonment at Broadmoor. Officially, the murder of Carmel Gamble remains unsolved and is now, unfortunately, a cold case.